All right, so now we're doing problem set 11, problem 10. So problem 10 is two parts. So let's start with uh, the background. So a freight company uses a compressed spring to shoot two kilogram packages up a one meter high friction ramp into a truck as shown below. The spring constant is 500 newtons per meter and the spring is compressed 30 centimeters. What is the speed of the package when it reaches that truck? So that's part A. So let's, let's do that part first. All right, so we want to figure out um, what is the speed of the package when it reaches the height of the, the one meter. So when it's right here. So for that, we can look at, you have to use the, uh, another conservation law, which is conservation of energy. And the conservation of energy says that before and after uh, an event, in, uh, in this case would be before the spring is released, so before and after the spring is released, the total amount of energy of the system should be the same. So essentially, <clears throat> so E essentially has to be equal to E prime, where E prime is afterwards, after the event. So in this case, or E would be the potential energy stored in the spring, so S for spring. Then after the event, which essentially would be after it's released and after it reaches the top of the truck, it would it would be or E prime, which has to equal to that. And the or E prime then would be when it's at the top, it has a stored potential, gravitational potential energy, so P E G because he rose one meter and it will also have kinetic energy so this is our equation and then we can express the kinetic energy furthermore so it will be PEG because we're looking for the speed uh, plus one half mv squared so we're looking for that v so we can solve for v squared first and then we can later square root, but we don't want to use too many operations at once. So it will be then PES, the spring potential energy, minus the PEG, the gravitational potential energy. And then you multiply by 2 to get rid of the 1 half. And then you divide by M. Alright, so then we want to figure out what PES and PEG are. So PES is one half times the spring constant times the amount the spring is compressed. In this case, it's compressed. So then it's gonna be one half the mass of the packages. No, sorry, the spring constant is 500 and the amount is, it is compressed is 0.30. So we square that 0.30. And then we're going to get that there's 22.5 joules of energy stored in the spring. And then we want to figure out the potential energy of the package when it reaches that top. So the expression for this is MGH. So the mass of the spring of the package is 2 kilograms. The G is 9.81 and the height is 1 meter. So this turns out to be 19.6 joules. Then we want to uh, input that those values into our expression for V squared. So V squared is going to be 2 times. So PES is 22.2.5. Uh, sorry. PES. 
is 22.5 joules and then minus the gravitational one energy which would be 19.6 and then all of that over the mass which is 2 so essentially the 2 cancels the units don't cancel the units are still there but the magnitude does divide to 1 so then we're gonna get this subtraction with a just this subtraction which turns out to be essentially 2.9 square per second square those are the units so then we can say that v we just square root that 2.9 and we get 1.7 meters per second so that's the speed the package has when it reaches the top right here all right so now let's go to part b so part b says a careless worker spills his beer on the ramp. This creates a 50 centimeter long sticky spot with a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.30. Will the next package make it into the truck? So essentially, we have that when when the when the spring is released, that um, potential energy, spring potential energy, is converted to kinetic energy for that package and then some of that uh, energy is spent overcoming gravity while it is being stored as potential energy and that the amount that is stored depends on the, on the speed that the package has right so in, in our first case in part A we have enough to store all of it in one meter of height and more if, if we were if we could go even higher we, we could store even more energy into potential energy gravitational potential energy but uh, because we, on, we, on, we only have this much to go up we we are left with some more kinetic energy but in part b there'll be a sticky spot here where friction kinetic friction is gonna do work on the package and that work is gonna be negative so it'll it'll take away some of the ener kinetic energy of the package so then when the package keeps going it won't be able to store we well we don't know if we'll be able to store one meter one meters worth of gravitational potential energy in mgh we need to figure out that this h to see if it's one meter or not so then we start with then we we can start with our conservation of energy so in this case the conservation of energy will have it will have that we have the potential energy and stored in the spring plus the work do, done, done by kinetic friction on the package which will be negative because the package goes this this is the displacement in the x but the force of friction is this way force k so then there's 180 so is that that product so that product is cosine of 180 so it's negative. Uh, so this is the 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 e before the event. Essentially, when it before it rises, it go it starts going up the ramp, and after it goes up the ramp, it'll be at the maximum height. It'll have mgh the the stored gravitational potential energy. So we know PES from our first problem. It's twenty two point point five joules. So let's figure out the work, the action. So this work is going to be FK times, essentially negative FK times delta X. And FK, because it's a horizontal uh, plane, or the, there's no angle, um, then FK is just going to be 
and new k mg this is the normal mg the magnitude uh, and then times delta x so then this is gonna be negative so then this is gonna be negative 0 0.30 times for the mu k times 2 for the mass times 9.81 for g and then times 0.50 for the delta x that's 50 centimeters so then this is gonna turn out to be negative 2.9 joules of work essentially so then we can go back to our expression and we can solve for h so h is gonna be p e s plus work done by kinetic friction over mg so then we plug in the numbers so and p s is gonna be it, it was 22.5 so 22.5 and then plus w f k which is negative 2.9 then over the mass, which is 2, times the t times g, so 9.81. So this will turn out to be about 0.99 meters. So this pretty much says that, well, we, if we round to three single figures, we get 0.98 meters. So this more or less says that it barely misses it. It could be either barely misses it, barely misses it, or barely makes it, barely makes it. But I, I say that because this is below that one meter, because we could we would use two single figures, but and this will run to one. But because this is just below it, uh, I would say it barely misses it. Because if, if we had something like 1.01, .01, then we could say confidently that it barely makes it. But our estimate or our calculation is just below one. So it, this the uh, it's very just in experiment just to try it out and see what happens. But I would say it barely misses it.